and welcome to today's episode on Shema. To measure perturbation has always been a gray area. For your orientation, we have standard measurements in our clinic for both jitter and Shema. An example of calculated normal versus pathological values are given in Phoniatrix 1, page 200. There are no standardized calculation algorithm for these parameters. Ulrich Eichholdt presents an overview of acoustical parameters in Phoniatrix 1. He only spends one paragraph on shimmer, and I quote, and analogously, the reproducibility of individual volume peaks is termed shimmer. The overall amplitude is averaged, and the deviation of individual amplitudes from the average is calculated, and then itself averaged and expressed as a percentage. We have had a long experience with jitter and shimmer, and as presented in the pictures in this presentation, there are many problems to understand shimmer. The abduction of the vocal folds during intonation is varying in the back to the front. The problem is also that the variation depends on whether you use the audio, glottal area waveform, or trajectories as a source. This was presented earlier in the video on jitter in the overview of the mathematical formulas. In the paper on algorithm for jitter and shimmer measurement, an algorithm was presented. The paper is interesting because a lot of the research on jitter and shimmer is made to develop software for synthetic speech signals. The parameters in the algorithm were more accurate than part. The author also tried to compare normal with pathological voices but since they only use Renke edema, their results cannot be used in other connections. After having used the high-speed films for some time, there is a demand to describe the abduction of the vocal folds from anterior to posterior during intonation. The software from Erlangen, Glottis analysis tools, includes calculations based on movement analysis of the right and left vocal folds abduction during intonation. The free part curve shows the right and left vocal fold movement separately with the area variation in the middle, chosen in the middle point of the vocal folds. Below on the left, the trajectory 50 of single movements is presented corresponding to the moving vocal folds, which will be presented later. On the upper right, you can see the jitter variation up to 20,000 Hz. The shimmer is of course not seen. Even in the phonovibrogram underneath, you can see a variation related to jitter and possibly shimmer. These measurements was of a qualified singer. We have earlier tried to evaluate the perturbation parameters during the reading called jitter and shimmer because we wanted to know the effect on continuous speech. And in our clinic, the results were that during reading, the amplitude variation during reading was less than 15.4% as seen in the table. The right vocal fold is red and the left vocal fold is blue from the anterior to the posterior part. The area between the vocal fold is seen and it's possible to begin to describe parts of the vocal folds abduction during intonation. This will help us to define pathology in a new way. Totally regular abduction of the right and left vocal folds will probably never be possible. The issue with measuring these parameters is the lack of symmetry of the human vocal folds. Therefore, it is very interesting that Brockman Bowser AL used four different intensity levels of soft, medium, loud, and over 80 decibels in their study, which gives various jitter and shimmer results. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.